The Zanzibar informal settlement is actually one of 2,700 informal settlements within South Africa. Um, Zanzibar is based outside of Johannesburg and this morning we're going to walk you through to show you what living in these conditions is all about. There's rubbish on the streets, there's a stench in the air, it really smells bad, it's dirty, children are sick because of the, the, of the circumstances on the street. People are building homes out of anything left on a construction site or on a rubbish dump. It's really not safe, really not stable and so heartbreaking, so emotional. They have a small toilet so that 20 kids have to share. She tried to make a, sh a shelter um, and they have to play out in the street where there's cars and I mean, you don't even know, gangsters or anyone can literally access the children. So we want to create a space, like a, a, a fenced in area with grass and playground and sustainable things that can help them and uh, use design to improve lives. Okay, so this is the kitchen. Morning. The crash is struggling with water entering the house when there's rain and uh, no insulation, it's freezing in here. There's obviously a very high cost gas that's being used. We need sustainable cycles that we have to put in place from vegetable gardens to cooking facilities to bathroom facilities and they all interlink so that life can be made easier for people. And you can see people have a desire for comfort. If you look here, someone went and actually bought synthetic grass. It's in our human nature to desire a little bit of home, a little bit of comfort after a hard day's work, just to come home and say, I'm warm, I'm happy, and it's worth the hard work. You can see it's insulating with pieces of material. And I mean, one big storm and that's just washed away. We have to make a significant change in the system that can really upgrade the whole living condition rather than just keep feeding money into the thing and you know just get swallowed up because poverty is such a vicious cycle. These are children like anywhere in the world that we know. They need education, they can be our next doctors, our next presidents, they need security, they need shelter and we can give that to them. Obviously, the need in South Africa for housing is so evident. We see it everywhere around us and it's heartbreaking. We would like to show you our vision and our heart for a sustainable village of the future. We've literally been building this boat for 15 minutes only and the frame is already standing. It's so simple and so easy. Let me take you closer. The specific cladding that we've used here has got a beautiful wood finish. So at least when someone walks into their home, they don't have the resemblance of a shack or a tin house. It gives them a sense of hope. Every corner is sealed off with a poly closure. This allows no water or wind to enter the unit. At the same time, an abode arch is actually the strongest form in nature. So even when the abode goes up, it's very pleasing to the eye, but it's safe and sturdy. We fitted the doors and windows with aluminum. So it's reliable and the longevity is there. The front facade of the abode is finished off with a polycarbonate sheeting. This allows a lot of natural light to enter the unit. Wherever we drill screws, if it's on the polycarbonate sheeting or on the steel, it's finished off with a safe stop cap. That just allows the unit or the screw to last a lot longer. We finished it off with an aluminum sliding door. If the sliding door is closed, We've got ventilation louvers above the door that we really want to keep open. We finish them up with the mosquito netting, so even at night you can leave your doors or windows open. Our abode is raised from the floor, so in the rainy seasons it avoids any flooding into the home.
welcome to Abode South Africa. Uh, we're in Zambia at the moment and we're building three abodes for uh, 24 youngsters, uh, women, uh, and we're going to be housing eight of them into the new abode. The abode that we're putting up um, has been estimated to be a tenth of the price of the, the housing that's currently here and it's taking not even a day to put it up which is just amazing compared to four months or five months of building a dormitory. Um, so we really hope that this will just fire into Africa and people will see how, how effective and how quick um, a, a comfortable lifestyle can be created.
we want to be able to talk about the two efforts that we have going. One that's going to be local here in the United States to try to raise awareness for the Abode Shelter Foundation and what we're doing. That's a bridge to help us build the village of the future in South Africa. So we have plenty of people you're going to hear from, so I would love if we could just start the introductions. So how about, um, we all know who Ty is, right? So. <laughs> Jim. I'm also the architect uh, that worked with Ty to design this house over the past two and a half years. Um, and I guess responsible for recruiting him and uh, like to thank you all for coming and, and helping to support us. So that is the uh, original rendering that was done of the house. So hopefully you'll enjoy that and put it in a nice place. Uh, this is, uh, has been a, a passion project, something I've always wanted to do. Um, built a lot of homes you know, on TV for a lot of other families and uh, sort of wanted to do something uh, unique, different, but also for my own family. And so it really is about all the things that not only um, makes a better life when you live in it, but also um, the cost of it, you know, a self-sufficient green home that um, we're actually net zero at this point, which is phenomenal because we've got solar, et cetera. So it's all those things, you guys. Um, but I'm just saying in, in the houses, but there's so many new technologies because it really is a, a glimpse at, I think, the future of home building and certainly a glimpse at the products that you can put into homes these days. It's been uh, a great project working with uh, Next Gen, working with Mike, um, and working with the builders here, which uh, a lot of a lot of communication has to happen, and, and we actually did it successfully, which is, is rare with me because, um, oh, look, a shiny object. So anyway, um, <laughs> so I'm going to pass the mic back to you. No, so this was a great project. It was, it was meant to be uh, a joint effort between uh, NextGen to promote future technology, as, as Ty said. Um, but clearly there's need, right? What we've done at BSB is we've actually conceived an entire village uh, using the abode uh, units. And so our dream and our goal, ultimate goal, is to promote and, and actually help develop these villages around the world, uh, not only in Africa, but in other places of need, including the United States. We tried to give exposure at the International Builders Show earlier this year for Abode, um, and we believe in the concept. Um, we are uh, really behind it to use all of our media assets to broaden the messaging, and um, we're excited to, um, you know, to be a part of tonight. One thing I've learned is, is a home that really is, uh, it can change your life in so many ways and it's something that we all take for granted. Um, and it can be big or it can be small, but uh, a place that you can call home that, that has the security to, to, to be able to lock a door and say that your, your family's okay. Um, we take for granted, I mean, every day. And, and, I, and I know that's one of the key things about a boat. It's like a safe haven for a family. And uh, so that's, that's what I think is such cool about this project because there's so many places that people don't have that security. Well, gosh, um, let me start out by just telling you um, the background of the story of Abode. They had the first one manufactured in Iowa. It was a small town 30 minutes or so away from us. And we looked at it, and that got my wheels turning. Jim and Chris were there that day, and we thought, oh, man, this is, this is officially now already bigger than me and uh, us collectively. What we did is uh, Jim and Mary Ann purchased two of them on one of our recent trips, and they are now in the medical center that we started there. We just built a, a building, didn't know what we were doing. Childbirth is one of the biggest killers in all of Africa. And so we thought that made sense to do the maternity ward. And so that is now, uh, the, the abode is up. We have not delivered our first baby from there, but uh, that will be coming shortly. And so what we're waiting for is for the insulation to come and that shipment left just yesterday and that will be in the uh, maternity center. But we also did a mission center. You can't say the word orphanage in Ghana, but that's really what it is. 22 kids live in that right now. Per capita, there is more poverty in Africa today than what there was when America started to give all these dollars. So it's not giving somebody something. It's not giving them a check or giving them even a piece of candy or a meal because that's not sustainable. The next year we went back to check on the school and we found out that there were um, several dozen kids actually sleeping in the school, in the classrooms. So they had to walk so far to school that they actually just, you know, moved what dust they had back and slept in the floors and stayed there all week long and then walked home and got some new supplies. Uh, Austin, my son, decided he wanted to build a place for the kids to sleep. 
And, and then we went back the following year, and the dormitories looked like literally they were like 20 years old. I thought, wow, if you can construct a house that would house X amount of kids, right, and it would last 30 to 50 years for half or less the cost, sometimes a quarter of the cost, depending on where you are, um, and it can go up in a day, right, my mind started ticking instantly. But you think about the small space, and you think about the political climate, and you think about, you know, the things that they're thinking about that we, that I don't have any inkling. You know, I, I talked with Boomi, and she's like, you know, you got to come to, to Nigeria. You don't even know what you're talking about. And that's right. So... That's how we um, uh, became involved, um, uh, and, and I'll close with uh, um, our, our group of students, actually, it, was, uh, it, it took uh, first place in, uh, for the iterative design that we came up with. So out of all the other 30 projects, um, it, it got some special nomination because it, it touches everyone's heartstrings. I mean, it's, it's, you see it, it's cool, and then you know, you're mad. You know, my mom's calling me and saying, you know, what if you use tire and, you know, for materials? Go, mom, come on, I'm an engineer, we got this. But, but people are thinking about it, and that's, that's the infectious part. One of the visions of the abode, it's not necessarily just the shelter um, that we're looking at, and, and you said the same thing. It's really the lifestyle. There's something on the abode that is just so pleasing. You know, every time we build one, Jake's and I, you know, we get goosebumps. We're like, come on, this thing is so pretty. Even if this takes another generation, this is the next step. It's changing lives. We want to bring some of the best thinking to the table. And that doesn't mean there's just one pathway, right? One of the things that I think is so cool about the abode um, and where we have been and where we are going is it's innovation and fresh thinking all the time. We don't want the abode ever to get stale as a concept. $7,000 can buy one abode home for an entire family for a lifetime.